Hi, everyone, and welcome to our recording of a Take Flight interview with a multimedia personality consultant and Survive Her founder. Uh, my name is Macy Merriweather. I am the graduate assistant with the internships team at the Career Center here at UNT, and I am so honored to be joined by Lindsay Levingston, who is an alumni, and I will get things started by letting her, oh, little technical difficulties going on. Sorry about that. I will let Lindsay introduce herself and her role in her career. Thank you so much, Macy. And hello, UNT students. I'm Lindsay Levingston. You can call me LL. And I graduated from North Texas in 2004. So you do the math. You know how old I am. <laughs> I studied communication studies, dual minors in dance and secondary education. And right out of school, I taught high school communication speech, and then I transitioned into a news career as a TV news reporter and anchor. I've worked here in Houston, which is where I'm from. I've worked in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I've worked in New York City and New Jersey. And now I'm back in Houston as the proud founder of Survive Her, which is a breast cancer awareness and wellness multimedia business that I'm really proud to, um, to have created. Um, and the goal, the main goal really is to inform, inspire and empower women and men too around breast cancer awareness because I'm now one year and a few months in remission of breast cancer and I'm leveraging my media platform in a very impactful and meaningful way with the goal to change lives. So that's who I am. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much for sharing that and congratulations on your mission. That's huge. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about a day in the life of running this online business and some of the other things that you've uh, done, including kind of some of the skills that you've needed and sure. um, things that have kind of come up that you haven't thought that you would need the skills for and you've had to learn along the way? Wow, where do I begin? I feel like I'm an octopus uh, because I have my hands in so many different things right now during COVID quarantine times. But uh, I will say this, when I studied communication studies at North Texas, I knew that I wanted to pursue a career in media or communications. I just didn't know which path I wanted to take because there's so many options under the communications umbrella, as you can imagine. So my studies and my foci were public speaking, rhetoric, interpersonal skills. So more of the theoretical aspect of communication and some writing. And I've always enjoyed writing. And so um, I would say that the skills that are really important are if knowing how to write, um, that skill has um, been really, I would say I'm able to leverage that skill in every role, every job I've had from public, I've worked in public, I forgot to mention that. So let me rewind, taught high school for two years, had to write a curriculum, had to teach students how to write. And then from the classroom to the newsroom. So I had to write news scripts, I had to edit. Um, I then transitioned into public relations. I had to write press releases and professional correspondence. Um, and now as a business owner, I have to write my own, I'm my own publicist. So I'm communicating with brands about collaborations. I'm reaching out for sponsorships. Um, I'm hosting a podcast. I mean, I have a, a lot of, a lot of wheels turning at once, but that, that, much needed skill that I think is so applicable across all industries is writing. Know how to write, learn how to write AP style as if you're writing for a newspaper or a blog and learn how to write conversationally if you were to enter the media world, news for TV news, for example, the writing is so different. But that skill is so important. I also should mention Macy, I'm an adjunct professor. So I teach writing for the media. And I introduce students to writing for TV, print, digital, radio, PR, and business communications. And what I found is that even at the collegiate level, students are not well equipped or prepared or their writing skills are very minimal. So whatever you can do right now at North Texas to strengthen your writing skills, take a few extra courses, online, if there's a writing center on campus, take advantage of that because 
to, you know, I, I didn't realize how important it is um, to have that skill and how it could set you apart from your competitors. I mean, we know that whether you enter communications or business or engineering, these markets and these industries are very competitive and knowing how to cross your T's and dot your I's is so critical and it will set you apart from your competitor. So writing, <laughs> did I answer your questions, Macy? <laughs> yes, that was amazing. I, you, you know, you said you graduated in 2004 and that just seems like such a short time ago. And then really you know, all these other, these different careers you've taken and different ways that you've been able to apply your um, very diverse degree, having dance and all of those things as well. Um, it's, it's so cool to kind of see that experience and just the different careers you've been in and the way your life has changed over time. It's been really um, exciting. I would, I always tell students that my route into TV and a PR is very non-traditional. Usually, you know, you study something in college and you enter that field or you study engineering and you become an engineer. <laughs> you know, I studied communications and of course the door was wide open. So it was up to me to determine the route I wanted to take. But I always, always recommend to students and encourage students to follow your heart and your passion. If you love to write, we'll pursue a career as a writer. And that could be writing TV shows, writing books, writing content. If you love playing with Legos, I don't know, then, be, you know, pursue a career as an architect or whatever it is, you know, pursue your passion because that will make a huge difference and ultimately in the quality of life that you live. Yeah, it's so important to hear that. Um, I think for a lot of students, especially you, you think, oh, I did this in college, so I have to keep doing that, but now I'm interested in this other thing and being able to move through and change right. it's, and, and it's okay through. to pivot it's yeah. okay yeah. to pivot but i i say make a purposeful pivot so one job should lean into and transition into the next uh, or you can make a completely you know a complete 360 180 and do, if you're a veterinarian and you want to become a carpenter go for it you know, the world is, is, it's like the world is, what does it say? The world is an oyster. There's so many opportunities and life is too short to do something that you're not passionate about. And I know that firsthand having now, having been diagnosed with breast cancer, mm -hmm. I reevaluated what I was doing in media as a TV news anchor and reporter. And I said, well, let me apply those skills to something that I think will be meaningful and life-changing for women and men. And that is through my work as a as sort of through my work with Survive Her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm wondering if you could kind of touch, you said, you know, things should be leaning into the next and if you could kind of touch on the things that have changed going from a teacher to a news anchor to an adjunct professor and um, now running your own website and this foundation. And I'm wondering how those have connected and kind of your journey to where you are now. Sure. So the connective thread from each, through each position and the connective thread, I think, to each position has been writing. Um, but let me think, let me rewind. So I was teaching, I was in a high school setting, teaching high school students. So after school, I was volunteering and interning with the public access channel here in Houston. And that allowed me the opportunity to kind of play around and explore to determine if I really wanted to do it. So in a sense, I created my own internship opportunity post-college. So see, that's what I'm saying. My, my route is non-traditional. Now, I would recommend in college intern because you'll save time on the back end. <laughs> oh, no, the front end too. So from teaching, I applied those skills of public speaking. I'm obviously engaging an audience. To TV, I'm engaging a much larger audience. So I'm able to take those public speaking skills and the writing skills. Those are coming along with me. And then as I transition into public relations, well, I'm connecting with media. So I, I basically turn the table. So instead of receiving pitches as media, I was pitching media. So there was a lot of interface. I had to use leverage my interpersonal skills, my writing skills, and my public speaking skills to engage on behalf of clients. 
taking those skills with me in my bag back into news. So writing, public speaking, um, engaging audiences. And then now I'm engaging audiences, leveraging my personal journey, which is so personal, um, it's vulnerable. And it's really, for me, I think it's been the, the best connective tissue if you will, the, the best connective thread to engage audiences. So every job you leveraged and used the same skills that I learned at North Texas and that I studied at North Texas. That's so cool that, you know, everything connects like that and you do have those same skills um, that you're using. That's fun. Um, having those things in the past, what are kind of your hopes for the future in, the in now being in remission and having this new website and um, you know being an adjunct professor and kind of how has that all changed or um, added to your hopes for what's coming next? Well, I'll say that COVID certainly changed the way that I'm moving and the work that I'm doing because now I had to adjust to virtual work. So a lot of the work I'm doing is just through right now through Zoom, um, less interface with people in person, but and a lot more of trying to figure out how do I engage an audience through a computer screen. So that's been challenging. So I'm managing not only my personal website, but the Survive Her website, which is I'masurviveher.com. And just trying to figure out really unique ways to um, to raise awareness, to spread the message, and to connect with people, leveraging the power of social media, um, leveraging my podcast and, and writing for blogs and conducting uh, me participating in media interviews. That's been really fun. Um, but the change is really, again, just trying to think of creative ways to virtually connect with people. It's a, it's a change and it's a challenge. And I'm so happy that I hope everyone is vaccinated so that we can reconnect in person. There's something really powerful about, you know, just shaking a hand or looking at someone eye to eye to, to engage them. Um, so I'm looking forward to more in-person events. I went to my very first in-person networking event this past week and it was so cool it, it was so weird not to have a mask on and to shake someone's hand and to talk about survive her it was great <laughs> oh wow that's so big getting it being able to step back out into normal it's been it felt weird i was like adjustment. i'm missing something but you know the mask is yes. part of the wardrobe now yes. i said i don't like it <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I, I know i've started like styling with it so i'm like well it's like an accessory now i can't what am i going to do without it's it job. exactly macy yeah exactly. mm-hmm well, um, what advice do you kind of have for students? You've given a couple really great pieces of advice, um, you know, trying to navigate A, this online world and B, creating your own foundation and networking that out and having a podcast and having all of these things that's so personal, uh, personally connected to you. So, whoo, in turn, if there's an industry you're interested in or a company you're very interested in, email or reach out to the company, reach out to a person who works there to inquire about a virtual internship or virtual shadowing. Or maybe you could go to this office in person if they've opened up. But I highly recommend that because you get to experience what you think could be a really cool job and you get to experience it firsthand and really see if you enjoy it. And I say, if you could wake up and go to this office or do this job every day without receiving compensation, then that's, that's when you know that's the route you should take. So it's something you're passionate about and it doesn't feel like work, but interning will open your eyes and expose you to so much that you can't study in a classroom that you can't learn through a textbook. So intern, I would also recommend students study abroad. My goodness, um, I just traveled to Morocco. We just got back like two weeks ago and that was my second international trip. And I, it was a cultural immersion that opened my eyes to so much more about what's happening in the world, how people are living, how they're eating, how they're dressing. 
And that exposure has changed my perspective and how, how I will approach my work. So if there are opportunities to study abroad, go for it. There are funds out there, there are scholarships because a lot of students may feel intimidated or they feel like they can't afford it. There's a lot of support out there, financial support, especially for our students of color. So I would highly recommend studying abroad. And then number three, what would be my other piece of advice? Um, oh, again, back to the virtual in the virtual world, create your own content, create a blog or website to establish what I call um, web presence. My friend who's a brand consultant refers to it as social currency. What is your social currency? Meaning your social media currency. Is it a dollar? Is it worth a dollar? Or is it a thousand dollars? What, you know, thinking about what is, what is your wealth online? And I say that because employers will Google you before they even look at your resume. So establish a positive social currency, a brand presence, a web presence that's reflective of your brand. You have to start thinking about your personal brand as you prepare to graduate and enter the real world. I think that's really important and critical now. So, you know, create your own website through Wix. Create a blog, a YouTube page. If you love to create content and you plan to enter the media world, like start working on that now if you haven't already. Yeah, I love that. It's never too early to start. Absolutely. All this. And the more you can create now, the better. You're just setting yourself up, setting yourself up for success. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in this, you know, online world. And that's so true that you get Googled and um, yes. people check your Facebook. You know, I grew up with my parents telling me that, but I never believed it until now I'm a master's student and deleting old Facebook posts because they were just exactly. 12, you know? So yeah, it's super important. So important. Um, do you know of any like kind of professional organizations or student organizations that uh, students can get involved in still as a student that uh, might be able to help them with that networking and that blog building and web currency building? Absolutely. And you said a key word, Macy, and that's networking. I would attribute the success of my career journey to networking, the power of networking, especially when I was in New York City. I Every job that I was for which I was hired was as a result of me networking and meeting someone. It really is about who you know. I don't care what anyone says. You can have five degrees, but how you're leveraging those degrees and the power of your network really will speak volumes to the, your success, the trajectory of your career. So I am involved now in the National Association of Black Journalists, and I know that there are chapters on college campuses. So that's one for those of you who are journalists and you're of color. Um, PRSSA, which is Public Relations Student Society of America for Public Relations Collegiates. But every industry, to my knowledge, should have a professional organization and a student chapter. I would highly recommend that. If you are in Greek life, I'm a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha. Um, being a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha, which is the first Black sorority that was founded in 1908, has been uh, so valuable because I have a connection of sisters. I'm, a, I'm an only child, but I have a network of sisters whom I can always tap or count on to help me, whether it is with my website or help me with a job opportunity. So there's, there is strength in being a member of a sorority or a fraternity. Um, and look at your national, your honors society. I think I was in, um, I was in the dance honor society at North Texas. I was also, I don't know if they still have NT40. Uh, I was like one of the top 40 leaders on campus. So any organizations that will um, help to strengthen leadership development, that will look good on a resume too. There's so many opportunities. I was so active at North Texas. I was the president of my chapter of AKA. I was an NT40. I was an eagle angel. Well, do they still have eagles, angels? We have eagle ambassadors. Okay, maybe that changed. So we were responsible for like helping when football, potential football um, athletes were visiting, we would help like 
oh. escort them and their families around campus. So we were like ambassadors. Oh, yeah. Which also helped me to learn the campus and learn what's going on. So get involved, get active, and join a political, not political, excuse me, a professional. I am not a political person, a professional organization. There's so many great networking opportunities. And you'll learn about jobs too as you're um, affili if you're affiliated with any professional organizations on campus. Yeah, those are all great, great ways to get connected. And I'm an only child too. And all of the organizations that I was involved in in my undergrad were so, so crucial to me surviving college. And mm -hmm. yes, it's so important to get involved, to have, make those connections. It you know, is. like we said, it's never too early to start. Absolutely. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious if you could kind of talk about some myths that you've always wanted to bust kind of about what you do. I'm sure if, you know, well, you, I can have, oh, I have a podcast, you know, I'm sure you get all kinds of faces. So yes, please share. So one myth that I often hear is, um, well, those who want to pursue a career in TV, I want to be an entertainment reporter. It's so glamorous. It's so fun. Not. <laughs> I've covered so many red carpets and that's the hardest job of, of, aside from traditional general assignments, TV reporting is covering a red carpet. And a lot of people want to pursue the fun, the e-news, the access Hollywood without putting in the work. Like you learn the true grunt and the meat and potatoes. Of, of being on air in the traditional news setting. But being an entertainment reporter is hard. You're chasing publicists, you're chasing stories. Celebrities are sometimes they're not kind. Some are, and then some aren't. So you have to deal with a lot of dynamic personalities and it's not glamorous. I, I can tell you there've been so many times when I was out in the field covering a story and I had to go live and I'm sweaty and makeup's running. And yes, I do, we do our own makeup in the field, unless you're at the network level, we do our own makeup and we have to do all this work in the field and, and then be ready prim and proper to go live in front of an audience. And it is not glamorous, it's hard work. It takes a lot of grit, grind, sweat, tears, blood, all of that. It's not easy. But if you're passionate about telling storytelling and engaging an audience and you're really good with public speaking, then yes. So that's a myth is I want to be an entertainment reporter. I want to be on the red carpet. It's so glamorous. And it, it's not. It's hard work. <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, yes, you can meet, you know, the Beyonce's and the Drake's or Ariana Grande and ask her about her wedding. Sure. But it does take a lot of work to get to that point, and the field is very competitive. Like there, one one percent of the of jobs are in entertainment, and the ninety nine percent is sports, news, etc. Yeah, <laughs> I had to bunk that, or uh, what is it? Bust that myth. <laughs> oh yeah, that definitely sounds like you have a ton of stories that you could tell. <laughs> oh my gosh, I mean, it was so so fun. I will say, I, I had a lot of positive experiences on the carpet, but I just want people to know the real and be realistic that it's a lot of work behind the scenes, behind the camera. And that that let, that um, reminds me that I should also mention whatever job you do accept, whatever role you in which you work, learn different aspects of it. So when I was a reporter, I learned how to shoot, how to write, how to produce, how to edit. So I could be, become more marketable as a journalist. So whatever, if you're an engineer, maybe learn different aspects in your, within your company. Or if you work for a radio station and you wanna be on air as a disc jockey, we'll learn the tables, learn sales, what's happening with the street team. Just learn everything so that you could um, increase your level of marketability. That's another piece of advice. I love those that myth, that advice is super helpful too. It's so important. Um, so a lot of this and a lot of what you do, especially having this personal, you know, breast cancer survival story leading into um, 
this website and this podcast and all of these things that really kind of affects your lifestyle a lot. And, you know, back to being a news reporter, just being so hectic all the time, chasing the stories. And I'm wondering if you could speak to that and then kind of how you personally have practiced self-care and how you kind of step away from that work-life balance. When I was diagnosed with breast cancer, it forced me to reevaluate not only my lifestyle, but the work I was doing. And then, so I was diagnosed in July, 2019, pre-COVID. And then COVID happened when I was recovering from surgeries and treatment. And it really, I'll be honest, I say breast cancer was a blessing because it allowed me to remove myself from the hustle and bustle in New York City and just take a deep breath and focus on me, my mental health, my physical health, my emotional health, all of which was really put on the back burner during my career. So I say thank you, you know, to my diagnosis because I was able to put myself on the front burner and also reevaluate my work, work-life balance. And now I've been able to rest. I'm sure everyone else has working from home, right? Working remotely. Um, I'm able to work out and spend time going for walks and, and, and being mindful of what I'm eating because I'm taking the time to sit down to make a salad to eat. So a lot, a lot has shifted from the craziness and media to now a more slower pace, calm, um, uh, I would say healthier way of living. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's so much negative of over the discussions about the pandemic and how this has all affected us, but it's so true of we all had to come back into ourselves and kind of recognize what's what we've been doing and trying to find better ways to do that. And it, it is easier working from home, getting to make better meals and the better choices that you can make. And it's, it's really hard to focus on kind of the goods of such challenging times. Right. But I say the blessing in it is that we all have been able to take a break and just take a, a collective uh, exhale, deep yeah. breath and exhale to reevaluate our lives. And that has been really great. Yeah, it has. I just have one more question for you as we wrap up and that's what's the favorite thing about what you do? Ooh, well, back to Survivor because I'm really passionate about it and it is a business. And I'm, I really love sharing my story and helping women um, really own their, not only their breast health, but their wellness. And what makes me really happy is when I receive a text message or a DM or um, an email that from a woman who says, I'm scheduling my mammogram because of you. That to me is like, okay, mission accomplished. So being able to help women through my story is really fulfilling. Um, and I should also say, I love teaching and I love working with collegiates and teaching them everything I've learned over the past decade working in media and PR. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your story. Well, thank um, you so much for inviting me. This was, it was a pleasure. Absolutely. I have one thing for our students watching at home. Um, if you could scan this QR code and take a really quick survey, we just want your feedback and um, some more information, if there's anybody else that you'd love to see here, um, we'd love to connect with them as well. And we've got LL's um, website here at the bottom, lindsaylevingston.com. And you mentioned another website. Do you wanna say that yes. again? Yeah, so if you go to my website, there's a tab for Survive Her. It's imasurvivor.com. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank you again, Macy. And good luck to all of you, UNT Mean Greeners. Yay. <laughs> Bye. Bye.